Hi, my name is Dr. Richard Randall. I am an Extension Beef Veterinarian at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. Today we're going to visit about care of the newborn calf and look at colostrum management. In ideal situations, we want cows to give birth to healthy, vigorous calves with little or no calving difficulty, and for those calves to remain healthy and grow efficiently. A big key component in starting that calf off right is colostrum. 85% of calves dying from infectious disease has received an adequate passive transfer of colostrum. Colostrum provides immunoglobulins as well as other components that help to fight pathogens and establish immune response in these calves. In addition to that, colostrum provides nutrients such as lactose, fats, and proteins. When we determine whether calves have had adequate protection from colostrum, we can measure IgG concentrations in these calves at 24 to 48 hours of age. Concentrations greater than 10 grams per liter uh, is considered adequate passive transfer, and these calves should have adequate protection. Calves with less than 10 grams per liter of IgG are at a higher risk for suffering from disease. The calf's immune system is competent at birth, meaning that it does have the ability to respond uh, to disease agents. However, it is immature and it doesn't respond to the same level as an adult animal. These calves are unique in that they are naive when they're born. There is no passage of immunoglobulins across the placenta during pregnancy. So these calves are totally reliant on what they receive from colostrum as their initial protection against disease. As we look at this graph, we can see that when calves are born, their intestine has the unique ability to absorb intact immunoglobulins uh, into the bloodstream. But the intestine rapidly changes over the next several hours, and by 6 to 12 hours, uh, we have a much less transfer uh, ability of the intestines, and by 24 hours of age, intact immunoglobulins can no longer pass into the bloodstream of the calf. That's why it's critically important that these calves receive colostrum as soon after birth as possible. We typically recommend that a calf should receive 5 to 6% of its body weight in colostrum within the first six hours, and at least that much colostrum again by the time it's 12 hours of age. If we think about an 80-pound calf, that would be 2 to 2.5 two quarts per feeding of colostrum. There are a number of factors that affect how well this calf receives the colostrum it takes. The number one reason for passive transfer failure is that the calf simply does not get adequate volume early enough. Calves that don't stand and nurse soon after birth and then don't repeatedly nurse within the first 6 to 12 hours are at a real high risk of having inadequate levels of disease protection from colostrum. The quality and quantity of colostrum also affects this. Breed types can have an effect. We know dairy cows produce more colostrum than beef cows, but it tends to be more dilute. Age of the cow makes a big uh, difference. Heifer colostrum is inferior compared to mature colostrum in both quality and quantity. Nutritional status of that cow also has an effect. Feeding energy deficient diets can uh, significantly reduce colostrum yield. There are also problems associated with absorption efficiency in the calf. Extreme environmental conditions such as cold stress and those type things reduce that efficiency. Any, any time a calf suffers from a calving difficulty, the efficiency of absorption of colostrum has been reduced. Calves with prolonged calving problems where they're hypoxic also does not absorb nearly as efficiently. And even mothering ability has an effect. Cows that do not nuzzle their calves, lick them, and create that maternal bond uh, will affect the efficiency of the, of the colostrum that calf can absorb even if it gets an adequate dose. So there are several situations where we recognize that calves probably would not receive adequate colostrum from its dam directly and we need to consider alternative colostrum sources. Typically those sources are either colostrum that's collected from other animals or from commercial products such as colostrum supplements or colostrum replacers. The ideal 
situation is if a calf needs an alternative source of colostrum, is to collect that colostrum from the dam itself and feed that to the calf. Uh, if that's not ca uh, possible to do, then mature cows within that same herd can serve an alternative source for collecting colostrum. And outside sources such as dairies and those uh, types of outside sources have been recommended in the past. But we've recognized that there are several disease situations that can be transferred in colostrum. And so we must be more cautious than we have in the past about considering these outside sources of fresh colostrum. Uh, these cows, if we do that, we need to, to ensure that those cows are healthy and um, are not carrying the diseases that can give us problems like Yoni's disease or bovine leukemia. Today, there are a number of commercially available products, both as supplements and replacers. Uh, these products are either uh, collected colostrum that has been dried and processed in a way to eliminate these disease-causing agents, or they can be built from blood serum that are collected from slaughterhouses and then processed uh, to create either a supplement or replacer. Supplements to replace are very similar, but it's important to note there is a difference. A colostrum supplement is designed to boost the quality of natural colostrum that calf is receiving, while a replacer is designed to be fed as the only source of colostrum in the event that there's no high-quality colostrum available. Colostrum supplements typically provide one, less than 100 grams of IgG per dose and are formulated to be fed in conjunction with natural colostrum. Whereas colostrum replacers have been concentrated in a, in a fashion so that uh, the content of IgG is greater than 100 grams per dose of that colostrum. And typically also contains other digestible proteins, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. So when it comes to thinking about the use of a commercial product as a supplement or replacement, there are several questions to ask. Uh, the first is, is this product a true colostrum replacement or is it a colostrum supplement? Depending on your given situation, uh, it's important to know the level of the IgG that you're going to be using and whether a replacement is more appropriate uh, than a supplement. The other question to ask is, is the product made from real bovine colostrum or is it made from blood serum? Studies out there show that we get adequate transfer from both products, but the differences in the way these products are produced and manufactured can create situations where uh, there's a lot of difference between given products. Uh, another question is, is the product labeled with a claim for bovine IgG or just globulin proteins? There are several different classes of immunoglobulins or IgG's but the IgG component is the one that we recognize as being the most important in this initial disease protection. So while a product may uh, list that it has globulin proteins that are greater than 100 grams, uh, we don't know what percentage of those proteins are IgG itself. So we should look for a label claim related to the IgG itself. Uh, one way to consider that is, is the product licensed by USDA as a replacement? USDA has a regulatory uh, oversight on these products, and if they have a US, and if they have been licensed by the USDA, uh, it gives us a better indication uh, that these products have met the, the necessary standards. Ultimately, the thing we have to consider is that all colostrum products are not created equal, and paying closer attention to the product details helps to make a more informed decision about what products you should use and lead you to the most appropriate product that's suited for your given situation on your operation. Things to say to consider is when you should use an alternative colostrum. There are several instances where uh, any time that you think that calf is not going to or has not received adequate, adequate colostrum directly from nursing its dam, uh, then we should consider these uh, alternatives. Any non-vigorous calf, slow to stand, slow to nurse, uh, uh, 
either affected from environmental situations or otherwise should be considered as receiving an alternative. Prolonged calvings or dystocias, depending on how long and how difficult these assisted deliveries are, uh, these calves could uh, benefit from an alternative uh, very early, immediately after birth. Uh, calving injuries in cows where they're not able to stand following calving and poor man uh, maternal bonding. If that cow doesn't accept that calf, then we need to look at an alternative method of getting colostrum into these calves. Uh, and it's critically important, again, to think about uh, making sure we get adequate dosage into these calves uh, by the time that they're six hours of age with repeated doses by the time that they're 12. You should contact your local veterinarian if you have questions regarding this and help to plan how you're going to have on hand alternative supplement sources. You, you can also gain additional information by going to the UNL Beef website, which is beef.unl.edu. Thank you.